Hello everybody, I'm the Travox Gamer, and we're back with Kingdom Hearts. This is the level 100 run, or as I like to call it, the God Run. Now, we skipped Wonderland, for, like a part of Wonderland. We just went there to grab the ice magic, and we made a beeline for Deep Jungle. Now, the reason why is that if we complete this world first, we get a cool little detail that pops up. I'm not going to say what it is just yet, but I do want to show it. Now, progress, we're going to need to find these slides. There's six of them in this camp, so you don't have to worry about going all over the world just to find them. In addition to that, we have two exper- well, one's an experiment, this is cooking. But if you find recipes in this area as well, you can make a potion? Uh, no wait, not a potion, I think it's a high potion and you can get two either. But first you gotta find the recipe. I think it's the flagpole, the globe, the speaker. The clothesline, and I think it's the clock that's where you go. So here's the globe. Here's route note two, so that's one. Here's another slide. And the most of the slides are top here, uh, you know, above here. We have three of them, I think. I don't know why I this messed me up because I think I tried to jump the huge gap between the two uh, instead of walk around. Here's another research note. We're done with that. And there's one more slide. I think it's right over nope it's over here i always get confused on slide two for some reason we go over here we examine the flagpole there we go now we have two more i believe it's the like i said the clothesline line over here and i believe it's the clock as well and then once we're done we could go in hey clayton yeah researcher huh I don't trust anybody with a gun that says they don't want to hunt something. You specifically, because I know the source material. Fuck you. Now we got all the notes for this. We can begin. All you have to do is... I think you need a potion. So you need a potion to do this. Then you freeze it like it says. And there, we got an ether. We got two of them. Did I go for the thing already? No, I didn't. God damn it, I thought I already grabbed it. Hold on. I thought I grabbed it in the last episode, did I not? That's for the ether. We already got it. Let's see. That's the second one. And as you can see, it tells us we completed. I think past me just forgot where the last note was. Oh, how embarrassing. Yeah, past me is kind of stupid. Got you. There we go. There's the last note. Oh, I remember feeling like an idiot. It was like, oh god, where was it? I know it was around, and then I forgot the clock was a examinable object, you know? Oh, put the potion in the pot, you open it up, you light it, the stove's been lit, and you get your own high potion, nice. I think the stove also stays lit, regardless if you leave the world or not, so that's a cool little detail. Now we're going to go off and we're going to get the other trinity and then, then I'll start this whole thing. As you can see, I still have the evidence from Wonderland. Good thing it stays with you, otherwise it'd be embarrassing if you lost all the evidence. Also be a pain in the ass just to, I mean, I know where it is, so it wouldn't be that much, but it'd be a hassle just to recollect everything if you left the world, you know? Let's see, I remember I needed high jump just to get here, but... You can make it if you time your attack just right. It has to be like in the midpoint of like I don't know how to explain it, like right there. That looks a little long. That was a bit long. I think it's easier to go from the right like this path instead. I I don't know, it just it looks a little The distance is the bleh. The distance doesn't look too bad from here, is what I'm trying to say. There we go. There we go. And this is one place I thought, oh, I can never get it without high jump. But I think a well-timed strike in, you know, mid-air strike would get you afloat. But then again, currently I do have something called Combo Master on, so that's probably why it's acting like this. You know, so I have an extra hit in the air, so that's why, I mean, I think the level 1 playthrough... 
I managed to do it, so it's not impossible. And this will take you to Vines 1. Now, Vines 1 has his Vine Swinging minigame, which is required for the journal, for, you know, the minigame section. Donald and Goofy will not move an inch during this play, so it's kind of funny. So we're going to just start a normal one. And the record to beat is 5 minutes. I think we could do this in 5 minutes. Of course, at the end of the game, you can just... Oh, um, I wasn't supposed to do this. Like I was saying, at the end of the game, you get two abilities. You get Glide and Super Glide. And they make this very easy. So if you want to cheese this minigame, just wait till you get that those two abilities and you can just cheese it easily. I think the others make it a little more difficult. Because I think in one of them, it's adding snakes to it, like... You have to move fast, otherwise you fall to the ground. I, I think that's it. 43 seconds. Okay, not that bad. If you're wondering why I'm going back, because there's also treasure chests up here, but since I did the trial, I think I made them despawn. And now that I think about it, I don't think I could get them back unless I leave the area. And I don't think I could go back that... Whoops. Well, oh well, you can always go back up, and if you're wondering where that other vine leads to, the other far end vine, you know, where I found the treasure chest, that goes to vine 2, which takes you directly to, like, I want to call it tall trees, maybe it's not, but going there would take you to the tree house that we crash landed on, is what I'm trying to say, and I could have sworn there's a treasure chest that, again, Having a memory of a treasure chest here, but it's just not. I swear, I must be in Castle Oblivion for all these fake memories. <laughs> Am I right? Now, the other game that I have this little issue with is Slide 2, specifically on Episode 3. Where I keep thinking that there's a mission with Bentley that's very similar to the mission where Bentley had to pickpocket Rajan a couple of times. It's just, it starts somewhere different. And I don't remember the details, it's just, I feel like there should be an extra mission with Bentley, but there's just not, and it throws me off every time I play Slide 2, it's like, isn't there supposed to be a mission here, and it's like, no? Am I just thinking of the Rajan mission again? Like, what the hell? Weird. Does anybody else get that from time to time, or is it just me? No? Yes? Am I the only one? <laughs> Please somebody say they have the same experience, so I don't feel as crazy. Uh. Then, like I said, there is... Fuck. That was my bad, but since I already been that way, I can show you what I mean about the other vine. I guess that's not much of a vine. That's more of a stick. Like, that looks more of a stick to me. So, yeah, a pole? Weird growth, honestly, but this will take you to vines 2, specifically to the exit of vines 2, so you don't have to do the vine swinging. Thank God for this shortcut. Climbing trees, that's what it's called. I knew it was something trees. But yeah, later in the game, Heartless pop up here, and I'm pretty sure that you have to use magic on the flowers to tell them to fuck off. Which is an interesting concept. It's just, I don't want to deal with that headache. So, get it now, right? And we're back at the tall tree, or the tree house, not <laughs> the tall trees. Why do I keep wanting to call it Tall Trees for some reason? Now, during this part, I made a separate recording for this Cat's Encounters before I said, you know what, I don't like this idea. So I decided, you know, scrap the idea. But the thing is, with Saber popping up, if he spawns here, he actually, like you saw, jumps through the floor and leaves that hole. It's just, that reminded me of a story when I was first playing on the PlayStation 2. So I was basically running around having this cat pop up as my enemy because there's the time frame between now and Heartless showing up. I think it happens after you get all this light projection, but the thing is, I was just like beating up this, what is it, cheetah, a leopard, whatever you call it. And during the treehouse thing, during the treehouse part, I end up knocking the cat away and this, th this was in a weird spot for the game, so the cat Leopard, cheetah, whatever you want to call it, the big fucking cat. It got up, 
it made a jump through one of the walls and left a new hole in the treehouse. I'm like, holy shit. That's cool. But the thing is, this was like, I can never replicate the event. It's kind of, it's kind of annoying because I want to, because I know all you have to do is like knock him towards the wall. But I don't know if I did anything different. Like, I know I really knocked him away. That's the thing. Well, Tarzan? Where are my friends, Riku and Kairi? Hey, I, I thought... That leaves just one place. Young man, we've been in this jungle for some time now. But we have yet to encounter these friends of yours. I'd wager they're with the gorillas, but Tarzan refuses to take us to them. Really, Mr. Clayton? Tarzan wouldn't hide. Then take us there. Take us to the gorillas. Gorillas. To be honest, I kind of like this moment with Tarzan. Sure? It's like Tarzan he sees Dora as someone good and Kirsten. he's not going to hurt his family, so he trusts them to bring him towards them to see if perfect. they could go to the, you know. What, what do they call it? Ground? Oh, the jungle is a dangerous Zora, place. don't trust him. We can protect ourselves. Look at that fucking smile. A combination with the fucking porn stash. How can we not, How can we trust him? He just has this thing that speaks villain, Sora. Also, if you know Disney movies, you know he's the bitch. He's such a low-tier villain. He, he's not even on the villain council in this game. That's how low he is. You know, speaking of villains, who's your favorite Disney villain? My favorite villain is Pete. He's a villain? I thought it was more of a nuisance. Well, he's a villain as a sequel, but he's also my old neighbor. We were best buddies at one point. Isn't that reaching a bit? Kerchak, please listen to me. I know the nesting grounds are secret, but I trust them. You see, I want to help them because, because, well, they need us. Again, that is such a sweet sentiment. Like he's sticking his neck out for Ooh. someone he barely met. Did like, holy it? shit, dude. No. I appreciate it, really. Kerchak. So, who's your favorite Disney villain, since you asked for mine? Um, I have two. It's Jafar and Hades. Honestly, gonna be honest, the Jafar fights are a very big disappointment in these games. I was hoping for a little more, you know? Well, I heard you. It's like, nice to drop the ball, Jafar. Could have been more of a menace, but no. At least with Hades, he could fuck shit up. Wait, Kerchak, please. Congratulations, you got the whole crew angry at you. Yeah, we're about to yuck you up, Clanin. Ah, a snake slithered by. You see, I say that poor gorilla. Oh, really? You know what's gonna slither? My hand's gonna slither right upside your head in about a few minutes, you piece of shit. Bastard, that hole was not there in the cutscene, was it? I don't think it was. They should have had it there. They should have had it where I pushed Clayton down the hole. Yes, there's a net below and he will be safe, but he still deserves to get the life scared out of him a little. <laughs> Alright, Goofy. Settle down. No, I will not settle down. He is a dick. He's my least favorite villain. 
Speaking of which, who's your least favorite villain? Least favorite. That's a bit challenging. Like, I don't want the villains to win, but some of them are just more entertaining than others. That's why I have favorites. Yes. Who would be my least? I would, you know, I don't know this person's name. I think the movie's The Rescuers. It's this one bitch that's terrorizing this kid, this little girl, into getting this diamond, and it's like, wow, you're picking on a little kid. You're a piece of shit, you know? Like, I, I would give you points if it was someone older, like an adult or something like that, but no, you're terrorizing a little girl. Like, good for you, villain of the year. I mean, if she were funny or entertaining or hell, even threatening, I wouldn't say least favorite, but she's not entertaining, she's not funny, and she's not threatening. So, you know, points against her. Porter, as I told you, I was not aiming at the gorilla. You are not to go near the gorillas again. Oh, because of one mishap. Come now. Huh? Well, yeah, congratulations. You got the whole squad angry at your ass. <laughs> Donald and Goofy look so goddamn neutral, though. Where was angry Donald from earlier? Yeah. What am I doing with these imbeciles? Blasted gorillas. I hunt down every last one of them. I'll track them down somehow. I'll stake my life on it. Hmm? I like how the only person that was phased by the gunshot was Jane and everyone else was like indifferent to it. Like, yeah, we heard a gunshot. That's normal. Nothing new. And it's like, okay, we're not going to be worried about the gorillas or... I mean, I guess we're not going to be worried about Clayton, but something got shot. About time you guys got here. I was getting I was getting bored of waiting, but I guess that's more of my own fault for lollygagging around, fucking around. Now, during this part, to proceed, you have to go to each area and defeat groups of Heartless and save gorillas, basically. And they're going to give you gummy pieces, which is a nice little bonus. Because it's like the gorillas are showing their gratitude. It's kind of cute. It's like, here, you saved me, human. Take this thing I found. And it's like, oh... Wow, thank you. I can actually use this. No need to thank me. You saved my life, human. You proved to me that not all humans are evil. It's like, oh, that's sweet. How am I talking to a gorilla? We became friends. My heart is speaking to your heart. <laughs> uh. But yeah, you want to go to each location. Ah, shit. Well, we found one of the special heartless. These guys... They drop something, I just don't remember. Lightning stones, that's what they drop, and it's like a guessing game. I say after, like, the third hit, or the second hit, it gets a little difficult to follow. But that's because I easily lose track of them on the third run. Or the, you know, third attempt. Third hit, whatever. Well, that was a bad example. Maybe I'm thinking of the last hit, because they go, like, crazy. It's just... Where are you? You're there. I lost track of it. God damn it. Um, you? I was way off. There is a easy method to do the last, you know, I guess this we call a round. Shit. And that is to keep pausing and keep track of the Heartless. Sometimes it's a little difficult to do that. And if you go too far away... You're out of combat, so, like now, I couldn't do it, because it'll just take you to the boss menu, but... There's a method to do it. And yeah, it was lightning stones, okay. Did I... Did I ask you about your least favorite villain? Because I know you asked me, but... Did I ask you? We both know it's Layden. Fuck that guy, he tried to kill the gorillas. Oh, alright. Just Layden then? No other villain? If I could think of one, I'll tell you, but I can't. Alright, right. It, it's kind of hard, well, I mean... To find least favorite, like, I, I guess I don't want to see the villains win, but some of them are more entertaining than the others, even though they're the bad guy. It's like, kind of weird to say you have a favorite one now that I think about it. If I were to say, 
Oh, I mean, it's just weird to pick a least. I mean, I know I said, oh, God damn it, what's the name of that bitch? Something Medusa, Lady Medusa, Madam, Medusa, fucking Madam Medusa. Yeah, I mean, she's, like I said, she's picking on a kid, but if we want to use that as my <laughs> least favorite villain critique, then a lot of villains would be in that category. It's just, okay, that one gangster from Oliver and Company, yeah, technically he does pick on a kid. He threatens a kid with a gun, but the thing is, he's fucking threatening. He has the presence. It's like, holy shit, yeah. You are definitely a villain. Like, I want to cross you. Because honestly, I don't think his beef was with the kid originally. I think he was kind of pinning after some bum who owe him money. I, I think that was the whole case. I don't remember how the movie went along. Who else? Like, it's been so long since I've seen those movies. It's been like, fuck. I'd say decades. And that would be accurate. Um... Other Disney movies, other Disney movies. It's, it's kind of hard to think about them on the spot, so... Who else would I call my least favorite? I never really liked Gaston, but I always, like, I wouldn't say he's my least favorite. I would say he's more of a douche. But I want to put him as my least favorite. Like, he's entertaining enough, but I still call him a douche, you know? I think that was the last gorilla, too. We could go back to the tent and progress the story. It's just... Now that I think about it... Like, how do you define a least favorite villain? Because honestly, if you don't like them, I think they're doing the role as a villain. Like, you're not supposed to like the bad guy. It's just... I guess, like I said, if they're not entertaining enough or if they're not threatening enough, they could fall under the least favorite. Like, like I said, what's her face? It kind of falls under the category, you know? Who else would fall under that category? Ah. Uh, the, the fucking butler from Aristocrats. Didn't give a shit about him. Like, actually, he does get through a lot of slapstick, and it's funny to watch, but... It's like, his motivation was because... I, I, I think his employer was going to leave for inheritance to her cats. Which, oh, okay. A little weird, but... You do realize that if you were taking care of them, I'm pretty sure you'd be compensated for your time. Like, cats need to be taken care of. You got a whole sum of money to take care of the cats, and they don't have a long lifespan. Just saying, you could have waited it out, took good care of them, and I'm pretty sure maybe somewhere in the last will and testament, the money would go to you for being such a good caretaker. I, I don't remember the movie exactly like that. It's just, you know, the thought process. Like, boom. No conflict. But instead, he tried to throw away the cats like a piece of shit. <laughs> and speaking about cats... Hi! Oh, shit, what the hell? That cutscene didn't last long. Alright, you spotted fuck. Let's go. Uh, actually, I think... Wow. I don't know, I feel kind of bad. Like, fuck. I, I don't know, I just feel kind of bad. It's a poor thing. I mean, it picked the fight, and yes, it's, I guess, self-defense, but holy shit. And like a complete psychopath, we ripped out its fang. <gasps> you know what threw me in a loop? Oh, okay, so that shows a map of Africa. A continent on the Earth. So, it, is the Earth its own separate world? Is it a part of this world? I mean, what else is part of the world? Like, is there America? Is there Europe? Is there Russia? Is there China? Japan? Canada? Mexico? Like, it, it's kind of confusing. I, I guess it's best not to think too hard on it, because, you know, at most it's an Easter egg to the movie. But it, it just makes me think a little. Are they all their separate worlds, or are they part of this world? It's like, huh. 101 Dalmatians, I believe, takes place in London. In the Peter Pan world, Neverland, we do get to see the Big Ben, which is, you know, from London. It's just, like, if the Dalmatians lost their world, wouldn't that mean London's lost? But if it's in Neverland and not lost, then 
Is it a different world? What the hell? M maybe I'm just overthinking it. And it is, like, just a little decoration from the movie. But still, it, it kind of makes me think, you know? Because some places are from real world areas. And it's like, huh. It, it's a bit confusing. I, I mean, I guess if it's their own... Se I mean, now that I think about it, lore-wise, in each world, they have their own, like, time time zone I, I guess that would be a way to describe it as a time zone but other worlds their time acts differently compared to others some might be more futuristic some might be more medieval y you get what i mean it's, so maybe that's the case maybe some worlds take place during some areas just at different times which i guess it makes sense if you use neverland and the 101 dalmatians worlds because they're, they have London in them, but they're from different time zones. Like, for instance, I believe I believe Neverland takes place early 1900s, while the Dalmatians is like 1950s, 1960s era. So don't, don't quote me on that one. It's just, it's a good distance between each other. So maybe it's a different London from a different time period. And if, I know I've been drawing on about this, but if you get rid of these flowers, I'm pretty sure the Heartless stop spawning. But if you want to just keep killing Heartless, here's a good chance to have, like, two come at you, un like, relentlessly, you know? See ya. And that should be, I think there's only four that we get, which is where I think there were more earlier, but for this fight, I think there's only four to shoot. So, after this guy, no more pop- wait, did I get that one up there? Yeah, I got that one up there. I, I think I did. Yeah, okay. There's no more heartless popping up, so I was right. Once you get rid of the flower, or not get rid, but once you use magic on the flowers, they don't pop up. So if they're a pain in the ass, that's how you get rid of them. Now all you have to do is smack the giant fruit. That should take a few hits. Honestly, of all the things, I mean, I think there's a couple things that don't have, like, a hit point. So using scan on them won't show you how many times you gotta hit it. It's kind of weird, but, you know, it's not the end of the world, obviously. But it's just weird that you don't see a little gauge telling you how many times you have to hit this thing to destroy it. But, eh, whatever. Oh, we got it. Layton? I told you he was a bad man. His porn stash gave it away, Sora. We all knew he was a bad guy. What would it make it bloom? <laughs> It'll tell you hitting it doesn't make it bloom, but... Oh, hey, look, it turned red. I'm a very simple person. Small shit like that entertains me, okay? Don't call me out. I, I know I said it before, but I like how it looks. I think later in the game it stops doing that for some reason. Like, kind of sad, really. Yeah, I think... Later on, it just turns, like, white, and it's like, Boo, I hit you with fire. I want you to be red. I, if I hit you with ice, I want you to be a dark blue. And thunder, yellow, blah, blah, blah. I think I already went over the color schemes for most spells. Again, I don't think I ever used arrow on it, though. I think it would have to be level 2 arrow, because, like... Level 1 doesn't hurt, level 2 somewhat hurts, but level 3 really fucks a Heartless up. But at that point, I think I think they start blooming white when you hit them with magic, which, again, like I said, kind of sucks. I know you can't really use Cure on them because, well, it, it's not going to go towards the flower. It has to be towards the target, and I think even if you target them, you still can't do it, so it's whatever. Right, here's the boss. Boss should be pretty easy. It's just a dude with a gun. How hard can it be? Meanwhile, in another playthrough... Fuck you, fuck your gun, and fuck your stupid fucking lizard! <laughs> yeah, he should be easy enough.
Clayton. Not Clayton. <laughs> Not Clayton. All right, going to book him up, Dora. Kick his ass. Oh, shit. Well, I guess everybody gets at least one hit. That's why I say just to, uh, you know, ignore my obvious carelessness in the fight. You know, as a kid, I thought he shot off the cliff, and I was like, holy shit, your gun's powerful. And then I thought he shot Tarzan, and I was... I was sad because, look, he reloads. I thought he literally shot Tarzan. It's like, holy shit, Tarzan just got shot. And now I'm going to take down your stupid lizard. Shouldn't be too hard. I mean, it's already half, like, holy shit, we literally beat it to submission already. It's on its last leg. Now, something you should know during this fight is that you decide to say, hey, I don't want to fight the lizard. You could <laughs> just aim for Clayton. And kill him first. Just letting, you know, if you don't want to deal with the lizard, just giving everybody the heads up that how you win the fight. Just beat Clayton. And he should be dead. How should I finish him off? Fire? Also, you want to be careful because he does try to heal himself during the fight. So it's best to not let him, you know, not leave him alone. So keep on his ass. Yep, Zoro, we committed murder. I did not murder him. He died to the heart. Well, well that's going to hold up well in court. Look, in our defense, it was it was self-defense. He attacked us with a gun. I think we're in the legal right, okay? Whatever you say, Zora. Here's a new spell called Cure. Have fun healing your own wounds. To be honest, when I first saw this cutscene, I wasn't expecting to be yeeted like halfway through the atmosphere with this one gorilla throw. Oh, imagine landing that too. That's gotta hurt. You're like, you gotta break a rib or something. Like, ow! How high do you think you threw him? I say maybe, maybe 20 feet. 20 feet off, you know, the ledge that we were. So, how how high is this ledge? I say. <laughs> Maybe 15 feet, 20 feet. I, I can't take the measurements in a video game. I'm just taking a wild guess. A shot of the dark, really. Alright. This is the end of the level. I'm pretty sure if we go other places, Heartless won't spawn. But honestly, I just go to the end because I really... I, I just want to seal the keyhole real fast. Which is, again, I think I mentioned this earlier. This is the one world where when you seal the keyhole, you don't just get a chance to explore it just kicks you out which I find a little weird I guess the other world that's a little weird with sealing it would be Neverland because the only place you could explore would be just the Big Ben area again kind of kind of annoying but it's you know whatever everywhere else you could well no if I think about it technically the Winnie the Pooh level you get kicked out too but the Winnie the Pooh level is peaceful so it don't really count and then there's the Olympus Coliseum. I mean, there's no Heartless out in the open. You fight them in the arena. It's just, it's kind of weird too. But most places, once you still, well, yeah, most places let you explore just those couple of worlds. I mean, I guess Olympus doesn't really count because no Heartless. Winnie of the Pooh's level doesn't count because no Heartless and it's peaceful, so it don't matter. Uh, Monstro doesn't have a keyhole because it's not a world it's technically a living thing so you don't have to worry about well, it kicks you out too when you beat it so it's just weird I guess and I think that's the last chest <laughs> I've been trying not to use this spine for some fucking reason I mean it's probably easier to climb but you could jump it if you really want to 
again, as a kid, I thought I would need like something like high jump, but you can make it with a basic jump, so no need to worry. This is your home? But that means... You know, when I got Friends. to this part, I felt kind of sad Same because part. it's like, Clayton. it's a nice message, it's just, Lose. Sora sounds so disappointed, like, he was really no hoping heart. to find Riku and Kairi here, no it's like, kind of sad, you know? No heart, no friends. Sorry about what I said. I'm sorry, <laughs> yeah, for one. Now, don't you be fighting again, you do. I like how, though this is the first keyhole we see, Sora acts like he knows what to, <laughs> what to do, despite that we didn't go to the Wonderland one. It's just kind of funny. I'm coming. But it's sure not the king's. Damn it, Donald, you're not supposed to be getting the harem. That's Sora's job. And speaking of which, Sora, don't ask Jane to be in the harem. She's too old. So, she's too old, but Aerith and Yuffie aren't? I'm pretty sure they're closer to your age. I I'm not too entirely sure, but she's definitely an adult. I don't support that shit. Huh, for once you're not a complete degenerate. What's true, the heartless to that world? The hunter lured them there. It was his lust for power that was the bait. But it seems the bait was too tasty for his own good. <laughs> yeah, he got chopped instead. Hmm. A weak-hearted fool like him stood no chance against the heartless. But the boy is a problem. He found one of the keyholes. Fear not. It will take him ages to find the way. Besides, he remains blissfully unaware of our other plan. Yes, the princesses. They are falling into our hands one by one. Speaking of which... So, as you can see, this is Snow White. Now, normally, if you completed Wonderland, it would have been Alice, but since we didn't, it alternates to Snow White, which I thought was kind of a cool little detail. Oh, I like that. He also gives us our new keychain, which, honestly, keyblades key got keychains, and I like to think that they're little trinkets that your friends give you, and they transform into a keyblade. And I always think that it's the chain itself that's the trinket. So, for example, before the keyblade we got, the Jungle King, it's a butterfly. And I think that Tarzan just grabbed it from the heart cavern that we were just in and made it into, like, a little trinket for Sora as a way to show their friendship. It, that's just my little head cannon. With that being said, that's all the time we have for. Thanks for watching, everybody. I'll see you next time. Take care. And remember to like and subscribe.